15, for where a testament is, there must also of a necessity be the death of a testator. What is the testament? Uh, what is the testament? It's the covenant. It's the first covenant that God made with Jesus that the first member of the Godhead made with the second member of the Godhead. Remember, God is one, Galatians 3.20, but a mediator is not a mediator of one. So God calls Abraham up to believe the promises, and, and by doing that, Abraham was the mediator. He kind of wedged himself between the uh, first member of the Godhead and the second member of the Godhead. And when Abraham believed the promises God made to him, that got Jesus into the earth, who is the second member of the Godhead. Remember, God is one, but a mediator is not a mediator of one. So Abraham got between the Godhead, so the promises God made, because Abraham believed them, they went through Abraham. Jesus got a body, the second member of the Godhead became a man, and then they were really to Jesus, because Jesus had life in his spirit and could keep the first covenant. And when he rose from the dead, the first covenant was completely fulfilled, and then done away with, God does not have that first covenant with us. God has the second covenant with us. So what is the second covenant? Go back to chapter 8, verse 10. Hebrews 8, 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. So that's talking about the second covenant. The second covenant is when you're commanded to come to God through the gospel. That's your end of the, uh, that's your end of the covenant. God's end of the covenant is that when you do respond to the gospel and come to him, he writes all his laws into your heart and mind. What does that mean? Um, all the laws of the old covenant that we couldn't keep, that the Jewish people couldn't keep, spiritually dead man can't keep. But remember, all those promises in the old covenant that the law was added to, all that was really made to Jesus, who was born with life in his spirit, so he could keep those laws, and he did keep those laws. Then he died under the weight of the sin because we couldn't keep them, and then rose from the dead so when he died for all the sin you and i couldn't keep as our substitute what he was doing was that was him making the first covenant that he kept and fulfilled a last will and testament a inheritance that he died to give us because remember you don't get an inheritance until the person who owns it dies so jesus died leaving us in his will that life that fulfilling of the first covenant the power that he fulfilled the first covenant with the life he had in his spirit that he kept the first covenant with he died he uh he was the testator that was his last will and testament the fulfilled first covenant became his last will and testament testament and he says i die i bequeath my inheritance my life to whoever accepts the second covenant again chapter 8 verse 10 for this is the covenant that i will make with the house of israel after those days saith the lord i will put my laws into their minds and then i will write them in their hearts isn't that amazing so the ten commandments written in stone written um outside of spiritually dead men's hearts because they're spiritually dead they can't keep those but Jesus, born with life, he could keep in spirit, in the life he had in his spirit, he could keep all those Ten Commandments. He obeyed everything. He never sinned. And in so doing and then dying, he made that a last will and testament. All that life that he had, he left to us. So now when we accept the Second Covenant, which is responding to the Gospel, that life that Jesus had in his spirit, that he kept the commandments with, that life goes into you and you're born again and now you can keep the ten commandments not on the outside written in stone now they're written in your heart in your nature in your mind so now like the roman 7 guy when it says thou shalt not lust but the more he tried to stop lusting he couldn't the more he tried to stop it the more it rose up and forced him to lust but now that you're born again you have those ten commandments written in your heart written in your nature just like it's, it's a bird's 
nature to fly. He just flies. A duck just swims. You and I now just live righteous because we have those Ten Commandments written in our hearts. Jesus left us his life in a last will and testament. And when we accept him, all that life is written into our hearts. And then we rise from the dead. We're born again with new life. And then we can keep the Ten Commandments. 